Hello everybody, this is the second video in unit four. This one's called Atom versus Cells. All right, what is the smallest thing on earth that you can think of? Pause for a moment and think about that. Well, did you think of any of these words that I have here in this flow chart? Did you think of a cell or an atom or a compound? And where exactly is living versus non-living? When you are talking about the smallest living thing, we are talking about a cell. And these are the things that you studied last year in seventh grade with Mrs. Wheeler or Mr. LaFrancois. If you break up or do just the parts of a cell, um, those are no longer living. They're just parts. They can't survive on its own. So the smallest living thing that can survive on its own is a cell. Atoms, on the other hand, are the smallest non-living thing on Earth, and that is what we're going to talk a great deal about. A great deal about in chemistry. Again, similar to a cell, when you break up atoms, they're just parts. They're no longer something that can function. It is just like a tire, and that's not really a car. It can't do anything. Atoms also can't be seen with your eyes or even a complex microscope. I don't have one at school that I could use to show you an atom. Maybe when you go to college, you'll be able to find one. All atoms have properties, both physical and chemical properties, and that's why I tormented you in unit two and three with those. It is the smallest piece of matter that still has those physical and chemical properties. Now, how small are atoms? Well, I want you to think about this. If I were to take an atom and make it the size of an apple to compare it, then the apple would have to be the size of the Earth. So that's a huge difference in comparison. I'm trying to show you again how very, very small an atom is. Now, something called the levels of organization actually show you how things build upon each other. And this is a good bridge between your seventh grade year and your eighth grade year. So you and I are going to delve around atoms and elements, which are the bottom two here. If you put two elements together, we've also talked about compounds. Now, if you get a bunch of compounds together, and those work together, you're gonna to get an organelle like a mitochondria or a nucleus. You get enough organelles together, you'll have a cell, whether it's a plant or animal. Now the star there means this is where we're starting um, living things versus non-living. A group of cells that work together is called a tissue, like your muscle tissue. Um, a group of tissues that work together is an organ, like your kidneys, your heart, your lungs. When a bunch of organs work together, you get an organ system, like your GI system. And then if you get a bunch of organ systems together, you get the biggest, and that's an organism. I love the little chihuahua here in the Great Dane showing you how you're going from the smallest to the biggest. How do we see and study atoms? Well, I can't exactly have you bring them into class. Um, we're going to use models instead. Um, also, when you get to college, maybe you'll use some high-powered, expensive microscopes and be able to actually see them. If you actually wanted to see an atom, uh, you would need a microscope that costs anywhere from thirty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Um, and they are called the STM or scanning tunneled microscope um, if you were going to look all the way down to an atom. So how do we know about atoms? Well, I want you to meet the first two of my old dead dude club. Um, Dalton and Rutherford are two old dead dudes that we're going to study because they made a great contribution to science and really got into what an atom looked like. Uh, because they were the first ones that created models and created some very famous experiments you might read and hear something about a gold foil experiment. And what it did is it allowed them to understand that atoms were actually comprised of a nucleus and then something that surrounds it called an electron cloud. And they have different parts in them, protons, neutrons, and electrons. And we'll get into that in the whole next video, but I wanted you here to hear it from me first. You haven't ever thought about how small atoms really are. Well, the answer is that they are really, really, really small. So, so you ask, just how small are atoms? Well, to understand this, let's ask this question. How many atoms are in a grapefruit? Well, let's assume that the grapefruit is made up of only nitrogen atoms, which isn't at all true, but there are nitrogen atoms in a grapefruit. Well, to help you visualize this, let's blow up each of the atoms to the size of a blueberry. And then how big would the grapefruit have to be? It would have to be the same size of, well, actually, the Earth. That's crazy. You mean to say that if I filled the earth with blueberries, I would have the same number of nitrogen atoms as a grapefruit? That's right. So how big's the atom? Great. I hope you enjoyed that video clip. So some of the points that you should have gotten in this video is what is the smallest living and non-living thing? What's the difference between an atom and a cell? And a little bit about my old dead dudes, Dalton and Rutherford. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in class.
You haven't ever thought about how small atoms really are. Well, the answer is that they are really, really, really small. So, so you ask, just how small are atoms? Well, to understand this, let's ask this question. How many atoms are in a grapefruit? Well, let's assume that the grapefruit is made up of only nitrogen atoms, which isn't at all true, but there are nitrogen atoms in a grapefruit. Well, to help you visualize this, let's blow up each of the atoms to the size of a blueberry. And then how big would the grapefruit have to be? It would have to be the same size of, well, actually, the Earth. That's crazy. You mean to say that if I filled the Earth with blueberries, I would have the same number of nitrogen atoms as a grapefruit? That's right. So how big's the atom? Uh, make sure that you understand what, in fact, is the smallest living versus non-living thing. Uh, make sure you can describe the atom by itself, uh, specifically its size, right, versus the cell. And make sure you know my two old dead dudes, Dalton and Rutherford. Uh, they will become uh, important as we go along.